you couldn't let me be when I was flying, I was free. So right now Pilates is a huge trend amongst Gen Z and millennial girlies, especially on TikTok. Pilates has been around for quite some time and it's known for being popular amongst soccer moms and the elderly due to its low impact. I first heard about Pilates from my mom who used to do it all the time when I was a kid and she was very pleasantly surprised to see that I also was starting to do Pilates in my adulthood. I've been doing Pilates for about two and a half months every week maybe like one to two times a week I do a reformer class and then I do a Pilates mat or Pilates fusion class at my gym and I love it. I'm obsessed. I'm a huge Pilates fan. Pilates is pretty hard but I've noticed that there's a lot of in my opinion bullshit marketing and advertising around Pilates. It's being sold as this easy get skinny quick exercise when not only is it quite challenging in the beginning but it also isn't gonna make you skinny. I'm just gonna say it right now, right here. It's not gonna make you skinny, bitch, or make you toned. I think that's like the word that is being associated with Pilates right now. What's the trick to these abs? I'm like, I just restart myself a few more. It's Pilates, months. it's Pilates, it changed my life. Normani just told us Pilates, so I we know, all need to be yes. doing Pilates. Uh -huh. I got her going to my girl too, so. I think it's a great exercise. I'm not a Pilates hater. I am a full on Pilates lover, trust me. But I just think that women are being sold a pipe dream. Like many fad exercises that emerge, I mean, this is like a tale as old as time, but don't be fooled by the hourglass Pilates exercise, how I transformed my body with Pilates, or even worse, I replaced Pilates with weightlifting, please. So the way that Pilates has been packaged to this generation on TikTok is through this like pink Pilates princess trend. I haven't seen too much of it, but I've seen enough to where I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I think the reason why Pilates is so popular right now is because it's got this promise of like, oh, you'll get thin and you'll get an hourglass, whatever, really quickly with a low impact exercise, but it also won't make you bulky. A lot of girls are afraid of weightlifting because they think it'll make them bulky. And so they're like, oh, well, Pilates will sorry my camera what's going on with my camera I'm sorry for the angle change a lot of women are afraid of getting bulky or looking too big if they lift weights and I'll get more into that later but the pink Pilates princess aesthetic is really more about of about like an aesthetic rather than actually trying to improve your health or strengthen your body which is like okay that and like every other trend you know so before I get into the truth about weight loss and Pilates and what it can do for you, I just want to talk about the history of Pilates and where it comes from. Because a lot of people don't realize that Pilates was a person. Uh, Joseph Pilates is the man who created the exercise Pilates. He created it during World War I while he was actually in a British internment camp due to being a enemy alien. He was German, by the way. He developed this new approach to exercise while working with patients in the internment camp who were bedridden and would attach springs to their bed so they could still strengthen their muscles through resistance. And this bedridden origin of Pilates is what inspired the reform machine and the Cadillac. Joseph Pilates then opened his first studio in New York City in 1923 and as Pilates grew in popularity dancers started to pick up on this exercise and would do it as a way to prevent or recover from injuries. And still to this day dancers a lot of times are required to take Pilates within their program because it's just such a great way to improve or maintain flexibility and strength and the kind of training that is involved in Pilates really allows you to prevent injuries. Then in the 1970s, a Pilates studio was opened in California and then a lot of Hollywood stars started to pick up on the exercise and popularized it. And once the 80s rolled around, it became a lot more mainstream. There's a lot more media coverage on Pilates and the average person was starting to do Pilates. Something important to note about Pilates is that Joseph Pilates really took inspiration from Eastern disciplines and emphasized the importance importance of not only the body but the mind and the spirit as well when exercising. So Pilates is not just about getting stronger but it's also about developing your mind because the mind controls your exercise. It's all in your head whether you think that you're strong enough to do something. I mean obviously we all have our limits but 
that mental agility really defines a workout. He conceived it as a mental as well as physical conditioning in which individuals could work their bodies to their full potential. It is the mind itself which builds the body. So now we flash forward to the 2020s and girls on TikTok are raving about Pilates and I'm I'm here to I'm here for it. I'm a pink Pilates princess, god damn it. I even wear my cute little outfits and stuff like I'm I'm with it. I'm with it. But I'm not delusional either. And I know that doing Pilates alone is not going to get me Lori Harvey apps. So let's dive deeper into this whole pink Pilates princess thing and what I think that means. The pink Pilates princess aesthetic is all, of, it's, it's similar to the whole that girl thing. It just is associated with a specific exercise and color. It's, I think it's associated with the whole like ballet core, ballerina core fashion trend that's going around. The Pink Pilates Princess is all about being cute and feminine and dainty and slim. That's fine. I'm not personally offended by that, but I think selling Pilates as like an easy weight loss fix is a scam because in order to get toned, you have to lose body fat. And in order to lose body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit. When it comes to losing body fat, you have to focus on your diet. Just point blank period. That's just how it is. Those 10 minute ab workouts are not going to get you abs. I mean, we all have abs. Technically, everybody has abs. But whether they're visible or not depends on your body fat percentage. Ultimately, weight loss and sometimes toning is going to come down to your calorie intake. Are you in a calorie deficit? A calorie deficit is required for weight loss and consistent exercise can really help you achieve that calorie deficit. All in all, I would recommend Pilates if you think that based on everything I've shared, it would be the right fit for you, but it may not be able to get you all the results that you're looking for. For example, doing a bunch of arm circles or moving your arms around in different ways is not going to result in a reduction of fat from your arms. Doing lots of exercises with a particular body part is not going to slim down or decrease fat from that area because spot reduction outside of like a med spa or a surgeon's office is not possible. As you lose fat, your body is actually gonna pick where you lose fat from. We all have different fat storage and fat loss patterns. So yes, Pilates will make you stronger and increase your flexibility and all that stuff which is great. However, if your main goal is to lose weight or to lose fat or to get a smaller waist, you're going to have to be in a caloric deficit in order to do that. Pilates is not a replacement for weightlifting. It's not going to make you bulky, that's for sure, which I think is why it's appealing to people. And that's why a lot of girls are like, oh, I'm going to do Pilates instead of weightlifting. All right, I'm going to tell you a couple things about fitness that you might not want to hear while I'm on the toilet. Number one, you're probably not working too hard. And before the comment section gets going, I did not say you're not working hard enough. So if that's what you took from that, maybe take a look inward and figure out why you felt triggered by that. Okay. Um, but you're probably not working too hard. You're probably not overtraining. That's really hard to do. 90% of people have no idea what it feels like to train at a 10 out of 10. So you're probably not working too hard. And the reason I bring that up is because if someone is out here telling you I'm looking at you Pilates girlies of TikTok. I, listen, if you like Pilates, do Pilates. But I'm getting really fed up with the number of girls that I'm seeing say, uh, I spent years killing myself in the gym just to find out that all I need is 30 minutes of Pilates and a hot girl walk to look and feel my best. If you spent years in the gym working your ass off, that's probably why you look the way you look. Part of the reason why you look the way you look. You can thank the gym for that. Because that matters. Your body will hold on to that muscle mass and that shape. Secondly, if you have a goal that you would like to accomplish, no matter in what category it falls, performance, aesthetic, whatever, and you cannot or will not stick to a program that requires you repeat workouts week over week, progressing them, you don't want it that bad. Sorry. If your attention span is that of a flea that, you know, you're having to repeat the workouts week over week and you're like, I'm bored. Like, why do I have to keep doing this? 
Because it's the way you're going to reach your goal. That's what research supports, and that's just what needs to be done to be able to accomplish a specific goal. I do Pilates, but I also lift weights. I also do cardio. I do a lot of different workouts on top of being in a caloric deficit and like also like intermittent fasting and stuff. So if anyone's like, oh, what's your workout routine? I would never say, oh, Pilates. Because I mean, yes, I do Pilates, but to say only Pilates is a lie. And ladies, listen, I, I would recommend everybody who goes to the gym lift weights. Like, I don't think you should just do cardio. And I also don't think you should just do uh, weight training, lifting weights won't make you bulky. Like, unless you are trying to bulk and you're, you know, eating the right amount of protein every day, or you're even in a calorie surplus to gain weight and to gain muscle, like you're not just going to bulk up out of nowhere from like lifting a few 20 pound weights every week at the gym. Like you have to try really fucking hard. And I think the reason why these trends exist is because when you tell people, oh, you have to be in a caloric deficit to lose fat, all they hear is eating disorder. When it's like, no, like, I think it's fine to be aware of your workout routine and be aware of the foods that you eat if you want certain results. If you want your body to look a certain way, there are things that you have to do to get there. And a lot of people just want to hear like, oh, do this like 10 minute ab workout and you'll get abs and like you'll be fine and perfect and you won't have to put in a whole lot of work. Pilates still requires effort. Um, as someone who does reformer in mat classes, I would say reformer definitely will kick your ass. And if you do solid core, bitch, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Maybe if I did it again, I would enjoy it more. But solid core was the first reformer class I ever took. And I wouldn't even call it reformer like solid core is its own thing it's its own beast it's almost like the soul cycle of pilates except like worse i've never taken a soul cycle class so i could just be pulling this out of my ass which i am but like it's just pilates reformer on crack the simplest way i can put it personally i don't enjoy being in a dark room with a white woman screaming at me at the top of her lungs into a microphone as edm remixes are playing at full volume that's just not really it's my that's not my vibe i like the controlled movements to like really like get centered one of the trainers i worked with at my gym was like yeah pilates is cool but it's very like think about your life and i love that but anyway i'm getting off track here there's no shortcut to weight loss there's no shortcut to building muscle you just have to do it the right way disclaimer i'm not a nutritionist and i'm not a personal trainer so like don't take what i say too seriously this is just what i do but it's not fun to count calories it does make you change your lifestyle and if you can handle it great but if you can't don't do it don't force yourself to do it if you feel like you're just gonna spiral into a disordered eating chaos what frustrates me a lot too is like if you're already very thin and lean and you don't have a lot of body fat or any body fat you're gonna see results a lot quicker than somebody else who has more body fat because there's nothing blocking the muscle from being visible so it's important to manage your expectations depending on what your body type is because like i have body fat i'm not zero percent body fat by any means so it wouldn't make sense for me to look at someone who's like rail thin with no body fat and think, oh, I'll get the same result as her by doing Pilates twice a week. It's kind of sad when you think about the marketing of it all because women have such tight parameters on how our bodies should look. It has to be like fit and thin, but not too bulky, but you, like, you can't have too much fat in certain areas. And it's just like such a mind fuck. And we're always looking for like some miracle or saving grace to, you know, make our bodies look a certain way because a lot of these workout trends similar to pilates are preying on women's insecurities in order to sell a pipe dream you know capitalism because it's like oh be a cute pink pilates princess buy your cute pink aloe yoga set and pay 35 dollars for a pilates class every week and it's just made to sell shit it's made to sell you things and as long as you know, women's insecurities are being preyed upon for the sake of marketing. We'll fall into this trap every single time. But all that being said, I think Pilates is great. I think it should be an addition to a well-balanced workout routine involving strength training and cardio. Again, depends on your goals, but that's just my opinion. Definitely do Pilates, but don't expect it to like transform your body overnight. Don't expect any workout to transform your body overnight. And there's more to life than being skinny. 
it's also totally fine if you want to get in better shape and you want to look a certain way. It doesn't mean you have an eating disorder. It doesn't mean you hate yourself. It just means that you have goals and you want to dedicate yourself to something, which I think is very cool and very honorable. I have a vlog channel now and I've been thinking about tracking my fitness journey on there. Some people ask for my workout routine. So if you're interested in that, then let me know. I'll do a vlog all about my workout routine. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Baby, you couldn't let me be. Then I was crying.